guys and welcome to another let's chat aqua uh glad you could join me today and uh, i'm not sure who's in the chat no one started chatting yet so uh let's uh go ahead and I'll wave how some people come in and then i'll go ahead and start uh the featured topic and uh, yeah we got a lot of couple of things i'm adding to the live stream just trying to get the way you know we're going to schedule this and stuff and see if we could uh you know get some regular segments and stuff going so some really cool stuff is uh, I wrote a little trivia thing that helps me keep track of everyone's points over, you know, each stream and stuff. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll make something out of it. That'll be fun. Hey, what's up, JS Aquatic Stuff? How you doing, buddy? Shout out to you. Glad you could join and uh, jump on board here today with me. And uh, yeah. Well, anyways, um, let's get going. With, so what we're talking about is tank bounds today. And oh, did I forget to roll that stupid cutscene thingy? Let's do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I had to play that. I don't know why. I I, I spent time doing that, but. Anyways, got to use it when you can, right? Um, anyways, uh, it's nice everyone's starting to trickle in. Hey, Michael. You, oh, I inspire you. Well, you inspire me, my friend. Uh, just, you know, watching, hanging out. Uh, it always helps. Rylo's in the house, one of my mods. How you doing, buddy? Air Bear, how you doing? Lots of new people here today uh, on the live stream. That's really cool. So anyways, I was talking about the uh, featured topic, which is about tank balance and what I say, quicksand. Um, basically let's define quicksand. That's actually, that actually comes from the movie, uh, the replacements. I don't know if anyone watched that. Uh, but that was like kind of one of my like gu guilty pleasures, I guess. I don't know. It didn't do that well, but I, I love the movie. Uh, it was one of those football things. Anyways, in that movie, he made it, uh, I've, oh, I can't remember his name. The main character. Um, the guy from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The really, really cool actor. I forgot his name. Uh, but anyways. He was explaining quicksand. What it is is that when something goes wrong, you try to fix it, and then it goes even more wrong. And then you try to fix it even more. And it goes more wrong. And it keeps doing that until suddenly you're in it deep. You know, it just keeps happening, keeps going wrong. And uh, that sometimes happens with us in an aquarium hobby, with our tanks, especially with the planet tank. And, uh, you know, you, something's going wrong. Maybe plants dying or some fish dying, and then you try to fix it, and the next thing you, you know... It, it gets even worse. Next thing you know, it gets even more worse. And that does happen to us time to time. That happens to the best of us from time to time. And that's nothing to worry about. You just got to just kind of take a stride and try to figure out what's going on. And the best way to understand that, especially in a planet tank, uh, is understanding the balance of a, of, of a planet tank. Now, if you watched my last video, it was about photosynthesis. And I stress the importance of understanding that to understand how to make your plants grow in the plant of the aquarium. With that, and uh, I'm going to actually cover this in a uh, properly in a, in a full video on Sunday, which is uh, you have to understand that to understand how to balance your tank. And that's probably, uh, you know, one of the things that you hear a lot about balance your tank, balance your tank. How do you balance your tank? Well, again, we're talking about three major factors of a planet tank, lighting, CO2, and fertilization. Okay, and those things have to be balanced. One thing's out of whack, you're going to start seeing algae. You're going to get an algae bloom, your plant's going to start dying, or, or, or what have you. So the whole point about balance the tank is understanding how much light to give it, and based on that, how much CO2 to give it, and based on that, how much fertilization to get. And they, it's so hard to figure out because there is no first right there's no balance your light first or balance your co2 next and you know it's kind of hard to figure out because one thing you gotta figure out is like oh well not of co2 because this is happening so i gotta up the lighting or or maybe i should up the lighting to make my plants grow faster easier or what have you or maybe you don't have enough first so you gotta put in more first but if you put in too much first suddenly the next thing you know you got an algae bloom why why is it happening because your plant's not growing fast enough in order to grow your plants faster Give it more lighting. If you're going to give it more lighting, then you got to get enough CO2 to use up that energy that they're creating from the lighting. So all that, all that really mixes in. There's no first, second, or third. So you, when something happens, you just got to have to kind of gauge it. 
Uh, last night in uh, Brooklyn uh, Hardscapes uh, live chat, um, I actually asked him a question. He, he's a fellow Aquascaper. I don't know if you guys have seen him yet, uh, but in the next one of the segments tonight, we're going to do a couple of channel reviews. Um, or, yeah, channel reviews, basically. You know, just talk about some channels that I think you guys subscribe to. You'll learn, have fun, or, you know, you know that that's that I love watching. Okay? That's going to be one of the parts of the live shows. But anyways, I was asking him, I'm like, well, how do you balance your tank, Kevin? Uh, and I basically answered that, well, you know, I'll start it out here. I won't furt for the first, I think he said four or six weeks. Which I, I, I was a little surprised on that. I, that was really interesting to me because... I normally do for almost right away or at least wait a week really depends on the tank itself and once you get it set up you got to kind of find that shift that balance and get to that baseline once you have the baseline then you can kind of just go up and down what he does is he'll you know set it all up he's got the lighting going he's got the co2 going I guess what he does is balance those two first and then starts adding first depending on what he's seeing that's going on in the plants and if you're brand new to, to, you know, if you're newer to Planet Tanks, you're going, to, you're going to say, well, how do I know? You're going to learn. That's the only way. It's really hard. Because, you know, you could say, oh, well, something's wrong with my tech. I don't know what's going on. You know, you take a picture, a picture of it and then you show it to me and I'll be like, well, try this, try that, try this. Um, that's how you learn. That's how you're going to get it. It, it comes from experience. It's, it's really hard to just... You know, look at it and just grasp the wrong way. You got to try a lot of things. So that's really important. Understand that that that, that photosynthesis process that I was talking about in the last video uh, that I made. And uh, you get a really, that's a really good place to start. Now, you might think, well, I learned it in, you know, when I was younger in biology or what have you. Uh, but do you remember it? Do you understand how just without all the scientific mumbo jumbo, just the basics of how lighting, how uh, CO2 and how the fertilization, they all combine together and uh, uh, and work together. Okay, so when you try to balance your tank, what, what I always suggest is when you first set up your tank, right, you're going to let it go. You're going to turn on your lights, you start pumping CO2 in it. And honestly, what I would do, I think, you know, when you first set up tank, tank there's actually, I guess you could say there is an order, right? Get your light, turn it on, right? Let it go, see how your plant's going. At the same time, release that CO2 at one bubble per second. Now, this is assuming that you're going to do a high-tech tank. And we're not talking about anything about low-tech. We're talking about mid-tech, high-tech, okay? Uh, that means you're using pressurized CO2, you're using lighting, and you're going to start using fertilizer, ferts, okay? So, you set up the tank, light's going, okay? And then pump it at one bubble per second. CO2, it's... Really, one bubble, two bubbles per second, okay? And see how your plants are doing. Okay, if it's not seeing much growth, uh, or you, you got really good highlighting on that tank, here's the thing. The more highlighting you give it, the more energy it's going to produce. The more energy it's going to produce, the more... Um, dang, what, what do you say? Uh, how do you call it? The more storage it has. The more ability it has to, to create... To go into photosynthesis and, and produce a lot more food for the plants okay so you have a lot you know, let's say you have a highlight really highlight something that really gives that really brightens up your tank uh that really pushes you know the tank uh the plants uh to process that energy okay so now you got to give enough co2 for it to use assuming that uh you're giving a, a certain amount of energy it's producing Give it enough CO2 for all that energy to use that amount of CO2 you're giving it in the tank. And once you get that, then you're going to start seeing, seeing some growth. Okay, then from there, you're going to start seeing, well, how's my plants doing? Is it not growing strong? Is it coloring in certain ways that you find there's certain deficiencies uh, or what have you? And, then, and at that time, that's when you judge, well, I'm going to start adding more. I'm going to start adding my ferts, but... In this case, I'm going to add a little more nitrogen than normal. Okay, or I'm going to add more potassium than normal. Okay, so understanding that is important, right? That's what we mean by balance. Not to give too much one of anything in which the algae can use, right? You want to grow those plants so that it's out-competing the algae. 
Okay, and you're going to hear a lot of that, and it's really hard to explain sometimes to people. And some people get kind of get the wrong idea, I think, because they, they always look at one. They only look at the one picture, right? They don't see the whole picture. They only, they only see one thing, and then they go after it, right? You can't really do that, you know? He's like, well, maybe you should add CO2. Okay, I'll go add CO2, pump it up. But what's the point of adding all the CO2 if you don't give the plants enough light to process that CO2? Okay, what's the point of putting all this fur in there if your plants can't use up all those furs because the lighting in the CO2 is not high enough. It's not pushing enough to, to give it that ability to use all that fertilization. Okay, so that's what we mean by balance the tank. And when you first start that tank up, that's what I suggest you do. You get your lighting, and that would probably most likely set you up for the type of tank that you can or cannot grow. Okay, that you can or cannot do. A lot of people come and say, well, I want to grow this type of land. I'm like, that's that's a high light demanding plant. If you're going to use that, you're going to get how, you know, you got to get some good lights. And they're like, well, uh, I don't want to, you know, pay that much to get good lights. And I go, well, you can't grow that plant. I mean, you could try, but it's most likely you're going to have trouble with it and you die. Okay. So a lot of people, you know, try to look at it just one way or the other. And I understand that, you know, they're trying to do it within a budget. But honestly, stick within your budget. I mean, you, otherwise you're just going to get frustrated. Okay, that's that's the other thing I'm, I'm trying to say. If you don't want to put CO2 in your tank, then it's fine. Your plants will still grow, but you're just going to get less demanding plants. Okay? And uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So when people come and ask me and say, well, what should I get for my setup? I want to spend this much money. I'm like, well, what do you want to grow? That's the biggest question. You want a, want a low-lighted, kind of jungle-like style tank with... Uh, Amazons and all that stuff and you know really low light plants still look gorgeous So just it'll look, you can make it look like a jungle and everything like that. You don't need to go and get all that stuff Okay, but if you want to do a whole Dutch style tank with tons of stuff like that You're gonna have to understand that You're gonna have to understand it basically. Okay, there are people out there really good experienced queries that can do some high demanding plants make a gorgeous aquascape without using CO2 because they understand how the process works. They understand how to manipulate the tank into not needing CO2. Sometimes you might need CO2. Sometimes if you don't have CO2, it's just not going to grow as quick, but it'll still grow. Okay. But again, he, they understand what to do with it. They understand that. Um, oh God, it's so hard to explain. They understand that if you put this much amount of, of, of one thing, then they need to balance it with this thing, okay? Uh, maybe more for, if you not have CO, if you have lighting, high lighting, no CO2, maybe you could compensate with some uh, um, more CO2 from the air, oxygen, air exchange, or, or what have you. Uh, again, it's really hard to get that advanced when, when you're trying to make it uh, for the beginners, making it understandable and stuff. I, I don't know if I make any sense. This is why it's hard to explain stuff on live streams. Uh, that's why I make, you know, the on-demand videos because I could plan it all out and I could outline it. So it's hard trying to get all of my thoughts together. But hopefully that, that helps you just a little is understand that you need to understand balance. In order to understand balance, you need to understand the basics of growing plants, which is the use of photosynthesis. Okay, so if you haven't already watched that last video, and then come Sunday, I'm going to talk more about balancing the tank and understand photosynthesis at the same time uh, and with all my thoughts put together. But I, I just want to just touch base on it uh, before, uh, you know, so get get a topic for this, this live chat today. So if you have any questions about balancing tanks or anything or any question, let's go ahead and field them right now. Um, again, thank you for joining me today, guys. I see D's in the house. How you doing? Down the wormhole. Uh, Lumpy Dog's in the house. Mean Mug Aquatics. Nice. Life with Fish at Clara. Uh, Pat Rick. Julia. Caleb's in the house. So, yeah, that's nice. My uh, nice normal lineup and as well as a lot of other people uh, that I haven't seen before. So, how you guys? I hope you guys are doing good. And Susan's in the house. Nice. How you, how you doing, Susan? Okay, Julia, I'm glad I helped. I'm glad I helped in some way or, the, or some fashion or the other. Um, yeah. So, yeah, any questions, guys, if you thought up or uh, anything that uh, you guys had 
that you've been wondering about. Maybe I could answer them. Maybe not. Maybe someone in the chat can. How you doing, Water Wizard? Nice to see you today. How to deal with black hair algae. Okay, that is actually kind of easy. Hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so if you can, drain your tank to where you'll expose the black hair algae, either on your plants or whatever. And then just spray hydrogen peroxide on it. Wait a few minutes, then just flood, it, flood back your tank and the algae will die. Okay, black bear algae is pretty easy. Well, hello, Caleb's dad. Nice to have you on board, too. Uh, but yeah, blackberry is easy. Um, uh, if you ever get diatoms, if you haven't watched my video, that's easy. Black out your tank. Because uh, that, that is probably the most easy way to get rid of any algae. And that's kind of been my go-to thing lately. Is that if there's a large infestation of algae, I can't control it right away. I'll just black out the tank for three days. It's no big deal. How you doing, Philly man? Pete. He's, oh, you bought a L340 Mega Clown Pleco. Nice. That's really cool. I got to see pictures of that. I got to look it up now. I didn't have black beard algae. Now it's on the plastic plants. Sure, why not? It could happen. Black beard algae will grow on anything you let it grow on. What type of algae responds to black algae? Everything. I think, as far as I know, every algae can re will respond to black blackouts. Okay, so will your plants. Keep that in mind, okay? I don't have a problem with it because I know how to get my plants to recover. And they, they don't get that bad. Maybe some plants will. Okay, uh, some people who tried it never had bad effects at all. Got rid of their algae, no problem. Plants are a little worse, worse for wear, but no big deal. They grew back. Some people... At plants that died on them. I think Dustin actually did a video lately about the tank at his wife's office where he did a blackout. And I think the Kabamba didn't do fair so well. Everything else did fine. Okay. So again, I don't understand why some plants will be good at, at a blackout and some plants won't. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, when I have a breakout of anything, I always black it out. Any algae. I, I've, it's always seemed to work. see here do you have any recommendations for co2 system okay now i actually had a conversation with someone about this oh i think it was on my facebook group and we were talking about the aquatech regulator and i have one and i i hate it i despise that thing because there's something wrong with that needle uh the the needle valve it's so hard to uh, dial in and it's very like i guess sensitive or what have you or it's not it's not attached right so that I have to keep fiddling it. Every time I switch the tank out, I have to keep fiddling with it. And I can never get the bubbles per second that I need out of it without like spending forever just to deal with it. But when I bought my regulators from China, the main China regulators you get from eBay, I never had a problem with one yet. Well, I, well yeah, I, I bought three. One of them I did have a problem with, but it was because of user error. I, it was, I didn't know what I was doing at that time uh but then i figured it out so um made in china regulators for me in my experience has been working for me and they're cheap 50 bucks for a regulator you can't go wrong with that right go out and get a tank five pound tank uh you could lease one uh from a place that does co2 or buy a tank it's up to you depending on how much you want to spend uh and then just go at it um the only thing I would tell you not to skimp out on is your diffusing system, okay? As long as your regulator can pump out the CO2 that you, you know, to your tank efficiently, like you'd be able, there's no problem with the needle valve or whatever, or whatever you know, product you get that with the needle valve and you can control the flow, then that's all you really need. The most important thing is the diffusing system you get, whether it's, uh, reactor whether it's a um in tank diffuser you know that mister okay or um bubbler or whatever you want to call them get a good one okay because it's useless to pump co2 in your tank if you're not diffusing it 
efficiently in your tank. Okay, that's why a lot of people like to do inline diffusers, uh, inline misting diffusers, or inline reactors. Okay, reactors work great. Uh, they do work great. I just, I don't know. I don't like the bulk of having an inline reactor go into my tank, but honestly, I can't argue how effective that is. The What I like most, I think, is uh, inline diffusers, inline uh, misting diffusers. They just go in your inline. They're small. Plug it right in, and it goes straight into your line on your outtake, and it, it diffuses through the line, and then by the time it gets into your um, tank, it's about almost 100% diffused in your tank. I like that. That worked really, really well for me. Finally, I've, of course, you know, the last, um, if I nearly need to, and sometimes I do, and right now I do because I don't have an inline diffuser that's not clean, uh, is that the in-tank in misters uh, or bubblers. Uh, and they work okay, but you're wasting a lot of CO2 that way. So you're going to have to pump a little more CO2. Uh, into your tank. If you're using reactor inline uh, diffuser, you're gonna have to, you could pump less CO2 and you still get uh, amount of same effect. You're you're gonna get about 100 percent, 98 percent to 100 percent, accordingly to the numbers on the internet, uh, diffusion into the water. If you're going to use a in tank, you know bubbler or mister in there, uh, they say it's 60 percent, something like that, depending on the diffuser itself. Now, I've seen um, some diffusers out there, and I, I'm going to get my hands on one just to try it out. They really, really miss. I mean, it literally comes out like mist. So I want to try using one of those and see how much it diffuses your tank. Supposedly, it's, it really works really well. Uh, the only thing is that some people don't like it in their tank. So I don't know. It's a lot of you know messing around and trying things. I just wish I had unlimited funds to do it. So... Uh, any good recommendations for fertilizers? Okay, here's my recommendation of fertilizers. Dry fertilizers. Dry, get dry fruits from aquariumfertilizers.com or from green, greenleafaffairs.com. Learn how to use dry fruits. Um, it's cheap. Okay. Oh, the only, only drawback about using dry fruits is that you have to kind of set it up. Okay, you have to mix your own bottle. Okay, assuming that you want all-in-one for it, they have all-in-one dry fertilizers, which you mix it in a bottle with uh, water, like 200 milligrams of water and, have, and like a fourth of a cup. And, um, and you mix it in a bottle and then you have a nice big bottle of fertilizers to last you for a while. And that bag costs you about, I don't know, seven, eight bucks, I think. And it should last, depending on how many tanks you have, it should last you, you know, if you have one tank, let's just say you have one 20-gallon tank, that's gonna last you for maybe maybe a year, a uh, year or two, maybe something like that. I'm trying to calculate in my head really quick, so I'm not sure if it works. But I always go with dry ferns. Uh, the other thing is that when you get more advanced in the fertilizing, then you can control, and that's the big thing: control how much to give uh, what to your plants, especially in the macro uh, part. Okay, the macro. Elements being uh, potassium, nitrogen, and uh, phosphorus. Okay, so that way if you know your plants is like, oh, my plants is deficient in phosphorus, I'll just add a little bit more this week to it and, and help balance the tank that way. Okay, again, that is a more advanced topic that I will have a video on later in the future. First, get through the balancing. That's the plan. Balancing your tank is the next video. And hopefully starting next week, I get into the advanced videos about, or the more the middle advanced videos about lighting, the series on lighting, and the series on CO2, and the series on fertilization. So there's a lot of videos coming, and luckily I got a couple of days off. Uh, today was one of my day off, and Monday is going to be another day off, and I take I think half a day off on Tuesday. I, it's my one year anniversary at my work, and I have to use up my vacation time or I lose it. So I'm just. That's how I just had my plan. I'm like, okay, oh, perfect. I need to catch up with a lot of videos. So taking, what, three and a third day off, two-thirds of a day off will help me do that. So, um, Random vids. LED strips are good enough for planet tanks. I'm thinking making my own lights by these. Please suggest tank size medium ones. Okay, I'm going to need more on that. Uh. That's a loaded question. That is a, a conversation that, that you really need. First of all, 
you have to get LEDs that is the right spectrum. Okay, that 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 uh, glow that shine in the right spectrum. Otherwise, your plants can't use it. Okay, and you want a balance of as well as not just daylight LEDs, but you want blue, uh, a little blues, but more red. Okay, and that has to deal with the spectrum of light that the plants use it. Now, how much you need, I don't know. That see, I, I don't do it yourself. I don't do do it yourself lighting. I usually just know what I need. Go to the manufacturer, they'll tell me the specs on it, and I'll go with it. Okay, if you're going to build a light, I don't know. You look up some um, videos from uh, Do It Yourself, uh, King of DIY. Uh, look at Joey's videos. He has one that where he did make his own LED strips. Okay, but you need a certain spectrum. You can't just put any light on, on it and, and then just hope that the plants will grow. Um, tank size, medium one. Not going to matter. I, that's, again, another question that's too general. What size tank? How much depth from the top of the light to the substrate? Okay. How many inches is that? And then how many inches is it back and forth? Right? Because you need to know, and I'll explain this in the lighting video, you need to know if your spread of the light is going to be enough um, part. It's going to hit your, you know, all of your substrate or all of the tank. Right, you might need to get to make two strips, so that it covers your you know your tank back to back uh, for uh, front to back. Okay, and not on that you have to gauge uh, how much power is going to get to your substrate. Okay, so I, I can't advise you too much on do it yourself lighting. How do you prevent green hair algae? Keep your tank balanced. Okay, too much lighting you're going to get algae, any algae, and this is for any algae. How do you prevent getting from any algae? Simple, balance the tank, make sure that you're not giving it too much light, not giving it too much, well, CO2, but that's the smallest factor on it, and not give it too much fertilization, okay? Keep that balance. So the thing is, is that you want to give it enough of those three factors for your plants to grow that fast, okay? So that, so the amount, the speed that your, your tank is, your the speed of the amount of your plants is growing based on the amount of stuff you're putting in your tank should be equal. If you're putting too much light in your tank, then you're going to get algae. Put too much fertilization in your tank, you're going to get too much algae. Okay? So that's what people have to understand when we say balance the tank. Okay? So to prevent any algae, doesn't matter green, black, bear, whatever, just keep your tank balanced. Don't give it too much of one thing. Don't give it too much where the plants can't use all of it. Okay, you want the plants to use what you can give it. Okay, it's better to kind of shortchange the plants of what it needs to grow just a little than to give it too much to grow. Okay, unless there are exceptions to that rule. Okay, exception is like EI dosing. The whole point of EI dosing is to get your plants way more first than it needs. Okay, but to prevent algae, and this is what a lot of people have a problem with, is that you have to do water changes every week, fifty percent water change to reset that that whole, you know, um, process. Okay, so again, you just gotta keep everything balanced. Let's uh, see. Hey, I got a CO two bubbler in my twenty long next to my HMF cor corner filter, and it's been surprisingly well because the bubbles stick to the sponge. And getting brown, getting blown back during the pump. Oh well, that's good. That, that's the other thing. Flow, yeah, that that helps too. Don't forget flow, because you gotta move that that CO two around your tank and your furs. So that's good. But like I said, if you want efficiency. That's a, probably one of the less efficient ways to do it with your CO2 bubbler. But it works. There's, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just not as efficient as, say, an inline diffuser or reactor. Hey, Neil PP Sharpton. How are you doing, buddy? Hi, everyone. What about using Osmocote Plus? I use Os Osmocote Plus. It gets annoying because it does break out of its pill capsule and go all over the place. But... If you don't mind that, I don't mind it. it. It works fine. People say it poisons their fish. I never had that problem. Also, uh, I don't know. 
I use it and it works fine. It's cheap. Uh, it's a cheap um, solution to just buying root tabs all the time. Looking forward to a fertilization video. Ah, uh, me too. It just takes a while to make these next three series of videos. I find that the lighting is a real pain in the butt because it's just so technical, and it's trying to. It's, I find it really hard to explain the technicalities of it without being too technical. I don't want to get too technical. That's a problem. I need everyone to understand it. You know. Hey, Alf, how you doing, buddy? Alpha Aquarium's in the house. What basic LED do you recommend for growing low? Uh. To medium low, okay. Well, you could go to Amazon and get something like, I mean, for low light plants. Um, what I did was get something cheap. It was uh, what Brightwell? Am I thinking is that the right one? You guys know which one it is. It's so cheap LED uh, aquarium lights. You buy those and it'll kind of work. It'll work. It just it didn't work for me because my plants grew way too slow. Everything in my tent was just moving too slow. Uh, and uh, and when it comes to growing plants, I'm impatient. You know, I want to see the plants grow, kind of like watching watching water boil kind of thing. So I I, I ramp I, I usually end up ramping up the tank. I'm like, okay, we'll make it low tech because I don't want to fiddle with the tank too much. I don't have enough time. And then like two weeks, three weeks later, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna put some CO2 in this tank. All right, I'm gonna buy a new light for this tank. I'm gonna start fitting this tank. Then next thing you know, I'm just doing all this maintenance on a tank. Uh, it never ceases to fail. I don't know why I even try doing low light stuff anymore. Because I just can't do it. I, I, I can't sit there and look at the tank going, Oh, I think barely grew today. Best heater for a 2.5 gallon tank. Uh, you know what? I don't know. Because I barely go that low on, on tanks. So I can't give you any examples based on experience there, Patrick. Um, so yeah, look, uh, the heaters I always, always try to tend to stick to, uh, that has a good track record for me is the Jaegers. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, it's not Fluval. What's the other, is it Fluval Jaegers? No, no, no. Think of a different company. That's the, it's the Jaegers. Uh, I hear they, they work for great for a lot of people and they've never failed me. I got an Aquian heaters before those. Oh. Oh, those are horrible. Uh, and and this is one thing you don't want to fail, especially if you live in a colder environment. Here's your heaters, you know? So maybe you want to spend extra on that if it really matters to you. If I'm in L.A., it's not that bad, okay? But if you're living in, like, Wisconsin or whatever, that's bad. There you go. Beamswork is what I was thinking about. Beamswork is a brand that sells those lines. stuff. They have highlight. Uh, and stuff too, but beans work seem to work for me, and they're they're decently priced, so might want to go with that for low light tanks. Uh, full spectrum ninety for thirty six gallon for less than fifty bucks. Yeah, it has blue, red, green. Yeah, the only problem is I'm not quite sure. I don't haven't measured or looked at the spectrum of the reds, but uh, the red has to have a certain. All these colors that you, you see there isn't just you can't just say I put red. On, in, in my lighting kit. So now my plants can grow. It has to be a certain red. It has, it has to be a certain red that, that, that shines in a certain spectrum. Because plants only can use the color from a, a certain spectrum, a level of spectrum. Okay, anything go over, anything less, they're not going to be able to use it. It's wasted. So, you know, again, that's another conversation. Uh, no problem, man. i uh, always here to answer questions. Alpha, yeah, if you mean uh, really think about that, most plants outside don't get more than four hours of or daylight. Yeah, it's true. I mean, again, it depends on how much you want to. Do. What we're doing is creating an artificial environment, and we're we're not really kind of like giving it. Everyone says, "Oh, you got you know let naturally." We're not. It's not nothing natural about it. We're putting a thing inside, in a box, with water, and expecting it to grow with. First that we're going to give them, CO2 that we're going to give them, and lighting that we're going to give them. And all of that is artificial. So in order to say, let it grow naturally, you're not. Okay? We put highlighting. When you get into it, you put highlighting, you put CO2, you put lots of first. You're forcing the plant to grow faster than, you know, naturally. Okay? So you can't say you're doing it naturally. You're really not. Um, but that's the whole thing. 
You know, it, all that stuff that we're learning, all that stuff that we're discovering every day is a way to make our hobby for planting tanks much easier on us and how to, you know, grow plants quicker than it usually does in nature. I just started watching a video. This is a uh, Accu TV, and I found them very educational. Thanks for the hard work. Hey, no problem. Anytime, Accu TV. Uh, random video, I like how you patiently address everyone's question. Well, that's what a Q and A is for. I can't do that in you know the actual videos, so I do it a lot in these you know live chats. And sometimes I do impromptu ones on on Saturday, like the last one on Saturday. I was like procrastinating on making more videos shooting more videos so i just got live and i just jumped in nerd of many hobbies i got a 20 gallon form from the dollar a gallon sale and i'm going to put angelfish tank mates consideration is this a 20 gallon long or a regular 20 20 gallon tall your angelfish is going to outgrow the 20 gallons i want to tell you right now and you want the tall tank you don't want to you don't want the long tank it's too narrow up and down but for angelfish, uh, tank mates, anything peaceful, anything that doesn't nip fins. Tetras is the ultimate classic. Though a lot of people just don't... See, you're going to run into the people that say, you don't want to put things like that in with the angelfish because, you know, disease and stuff. And it makes it really hard that way, okay? What I would suggest is just be very careful what you put in your tank always. Set up a quarantine system if you can uh, so you have to worry about all that stuff. You could... Make sure that the fish is okay before you actually put in your main tank and not kill all your angelfish. But for angelfish, anything that's peaceful, anything that doesn't nip fins, don't put tiger barbs in it. That's horrible. Um, I don't know what else nip fins. Um, I'm not much of a fish guy, too much of a fish guy in, in that sense because uh, I'm more a planted tank guy. The fish are the decorations for my planted tanks is kind of how I see it. Uh, but yeah, um, but for angelfish, classics are tetras. Tetras are a really good fish to keep with uh, other peaceful fish like angelfish and uh, discus and stuff like that. Um, love angelfish, love discus because they're from they're they're my favorite cichlids. Uh, South American cichlids are my favorites. I'm not a huge fan of African cichlids, but when it comes to yeah South American, I love them. It's, I don't know why. I just I just love the, love the whole Amazon thing going on. Uh, Andy Stone, I'm swapping from saltwater reef keeping to planted tanks. What kind of flow do plant tanks need? Um, just enough flow to get the water around uh, your tank. Uh, enough to get the CO2 around and the ferts. If not, seeing, if not using CO2, then enough to get the ferts around. Just make sure there's just flow going around it. You don't need high flow like you would in a salt reef tank. In a reef tank? Salt reef tank. Like there's a fresh reef tank. Okay. All right, so a reef tank, you don't need that much of a huge flow, okay? Just enough to just move the water around so that the nutrients from your ferts can get to your plants. If you're using CO2, it's a little more important because, well, it's both important. Just enough flow. Uh, just a little waving to your plants is good. Okay, Don't make them go all crazy. I don't know if that's the best way to explain it. It's really hard to explain fl flow sometimes. And why are you swapping from... Reef keeping just to keep the maintenance down a little, because I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna like reboot my reef tank soon someday. Thank you, Victor, and welcome to the live chat, Victor Einheim Jaeger. That is what I was trying to think of. Uh, Ryo, I was thinking of getting a few of those beans with lights. Yeah, I mean they're cheap. If you're gonna just do a really low light tank, yeah, and they work. Um. Ike TV's answering about the cheap beta heater with Phoenix control. Okay. Bald Dangerous. How you doing, Bald and Dangerous? Welcome to the live chat. Um, Pat Rick, I picked up a hydro micro. Okay. Talking to Pat Rick. Oh, you visited the site. Says she cleaned her algae with hot water. What? How? Like she poured hot water into her tank? Or she just... Pulled out the decorations and cleaned it with hot water. I mean, that's going to work, obviously. But I think when you're dealing with algae, a lot of people have stuff they can't just pull out and clean with hot water. That's a problem, especially with plants, too. So, Thanks for answering all my questions. You are welcome, sir. What light would you recommend to grow dwarf hair grass and Louis, uh, Louisa? 
Oh, uh, the wig, yeah, you need... I, well, they could grow in decent low light lights. Okay, dwarf hair grass could grow pretty decently in low light, too. You know, a higher spectrum of low light. Um, dwarf hair grass is actually easier to grow. Uh, more easier than the other carpeting plants. But, of course, like any plants that do a lot more, uh, m more well in light, higher light plant, uh, higher light environments. But, yeah. Again, alpha it depends on your tank, uh, depth of your tank. Must see a two subject. Yeah. Uh, hair grass, though, yeah. Hair grass is easier to grow. Uh, it can actually grow in low light. So can the Luigia. You just won't get the type of growth that a lot of people strive to get, you know, with those plants, but it will grow. And then, see, that's the other thing, too. A lot of people are, can I grow this in low light? Well, yeah, but it just won't look that good. You know, are you growing it just to grow it? Or are you growing it because you want to make something nice? You know, and a lot of us who make Planet Tanks, this, the whole point of doing Planet Tanks is to make it look nice. Thank you, Pat, Rick, for that uh, super chat. And I love how you always call me Chief. That's really cool. And I will definitely have a great weekend, sir. Thank you. Uh, I had a and okay. All right, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and move on really quick. Um, I basically want to talk about a couple of websites. I didn't make a really cool intro for this. So we'll just jump right into it, okay? Uh, in this segment, we're just going to go over a couple of, uh, you know, um, channels that I watch. That I kind of want to plug. And, uh, okay, well, all right, here we go. But just pretend it's there's a cutscene or whatever. Okay, so... First one I'll talk about is Brooklyn Hardscapes. Okay, if you guys want to learn a lot about aquascaping, uh, and a lot about Planet Tanks, he's there too. He answers everyone's question. His live streams on Thursdays, uh, and I really want him because one, he's really good uh, at aquascaping. He does some amazing stuff, and a uh, second, um, uh, he knows his stuff too. Okay, uh, do I agree with it? Most of the stuff, no. I mean, there's going to be things I don't agree with a lot of people. A lot of people don't agree with me. But that's the great thing about it. I could disagree with them. He could disagree with me without us trying to kill each other. That's, that's why I love talking with him. And, um, yeah, minus brownie points because he's not into the Dutch style thing. And every I always you know, tease him about Dutch style. He's like, I'm not going to do Dutch. He doesn't like the Dutch style thing. He thinks it's boring. Uh, so we, we always... Uh, Raz each other about that. But anyways, the first thing you check out is check out this right here, this vase, his red oak planted vase tank. Okay. This is gorgeous. Check this out. Let's right, see if I can get in. And I can't wait to see it completely grown. Look at that. That's going to be so awesome. Uh, yeah, so good channel to check out. Uh, live chats on Thursdays. So, hey, you don't have anything to do Thursday because my live chats are on Fridays, right? So, uh, yeah, check them out. Go sub. And, uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go here. So all my peeps currently in chat. Let's go ahead and blast them. Let's go ahead and give them a comment bomb. Yeah, give them a comment bomb. Just go over there. Plug in, uh, you know, a comment and just say uh, the water box says hello or something like that to that effect. Make it uh, snarky or whatever if you want. Uh, next show I want to talk about is Yahoo Nation. I don't know if some of you guys remember him. His name is Matt. He actually started as Matt Reef Tanks, I believe. Because uh, I, I kind of got into it when he switched over to just making a vlog. Um... I actually love uh, watching this, and sometimes he will have uh, things about aquariums on his channel. Uh, but what I love is that he travels all the world and he trikes, right? And he blogs it all. So it's really interesting to see all the places he's going and stuff like that. But lately, you know, he had to go back home because his dad was diagnosed with cancer. And he's actually vlogging all this, right? We actually see, you know, he, we get to know his dad and stuff and all the things that they're actually currently going through right now. Uh, it is sad. I mean, it's depressing, sad, but at the same time, I don't know. You watch it, it makes you think, you know, this life that we live in, you know, it's, it is short, you know. Um, and I don't know. I'm trying not to get too, you know, whatever with with you guys. But 
it's definitely a good channel to check out. Uh, I love his vlogging style, and um, it's great to watch. And he will sometimes get into aquariums. Like uh, he did go and, um, what is it? What did he do? He did a whole thing where he visited, uh, uh, dang, I keep forgetting that guy's damn name. What is his channel? Uh, see, this was after, it was after, there it is, right here. Uh, what's the title? Gardens, that's it. He went over there, he had a long talk with them. They showed, uh, all the new, the new operations that he's setting up. It's huge, right? And, um, yeah, it's another great channel. Again, just check out Title Gardens if you're into reef tanks. Uh, a lot of information there. And he also, you know, does this live chat where he does this kind of, uh, selling his corals in a live chat format, kind of like those, you know, things that you see on, you know, TV in, in the middle of the night type of thing. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's the Matt Reef Tank right here. That's his old little series there. But yeah, and then the third, well, I'm, this one's not really a channel review, but mainly, um, I don't know if you guys heard it, but Rico's, I don't know if you even watch Rico's, uh, Fish tanks? Is it Rico's fish tank? Rico's, Rico's reefs or something like that? But anyways, his channel got shut down. I don't know what exactly happened there. He doesn't know either. And usually when that happens, though, I can tell you that it's, it's not... You see, he didn't get any community strikes or anything. He didn't get any warning. It just got shut down. And when that happens, then usually means it's, it's a more higher level kind of um, thing that happened. That they probably... I don't know what it is. Uh, it could have been a, you know, something that happened where he got a cease and desist letter, told them that, hey, you got to shut this guy down or something. Uh, but it has to be big enough for them to just shut down your channel um, using copyright material or uh, something bad, you know, uh, showing bad things. I don't know exactly what it could be. I watched some of his live streams before. I sat in his live streams watching them chat and stuff. I mean, sometimes they just say things and do things that might be on the edge. But not enough, I don't think, to get his channel uh, demonetized or whatever. Uh, or have his channel shut down. So I'm not entirely sure on that one. Uh, but it sucks. I'll let you guys know what's up with that. Um, and he's, he's planning. Actually, he had a talk, with I think, on CJ's Aquarium about restarting the channel anyways. He'd been, he'd been thinking about doing that, rebranding and stuff. Uh, because he wants to get away from... Uh, of the live chat and put more on demand kind of videos, which is good. I think he has a lot of knowledge and enough charisma to do those type of videos, and his channel will sell faster that way if he did it that way. Um, so, anyways, good luck to him, and I, and I hope, uh, I don't know, I hope he figures it out, uh, basically. But I'm pretty sure a lot of us are here to help uh, when possible. But uh, yeah, anyways, there you go. That is the channel review segment. And, uh, yeah, how many people do we have? We have 21 in the chat? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's time, guys. What do you think? Is it time? Anyone in the left in my uh, ch live chat over there? Do you guys know what time it is? What it time it is for? And I think maybe this might get more popular. I don't know, but this is kind of fun. We had fun last time doing it when... Um, Joseph, J.H. Aquatics was on. But, yeah. You guys ready for some trivia? Did you guys leave? Why is the chat not working? Oh, no. Oh, you know what? I didn't link Yahoo Nations. Oh. Ali, love your videos. I'm still a newbie, definitely, but I'm successfully growing plants on my, my tech, at least. Thanks for sharing. Hey, nice. Congrats on that, Ali. So, okay, the chat is working. But I need people to talk so I know that they're ready for trivia because it would be kind of silly if I'm asking questions and no one's... Oh, you know what? That's why you guys didn't know because I didn't roll the intro. Be right back. Oh, that's not the intro. This is the intro. <laughs> Okay, guys, and welcome, Ryan Max Sickley just joined us. We are going to our trivia segment. Now, 
I was going to record the whole thing about instructions about how to do it and stuff, but I just didn't have the time today. I spent my day programming this little thingy that's going to help me keep track of everything. But uh, this is how it works. Question is going to be on the screen. I will read it off, but you could also read it. And uh, there's three types of questions. Okay, there's going to be a free form question where you have to type in that, that answer. And that answer has to be spelled correctly. Okay, no more typo excuses. Spelled correctly. If it's a name, I uh, most likely want both names. I will let you know. The second question is true or false. All you have to do is enter T for true, F for false. Okay, and then the third type of question, the multiple choice questions, and you'll get an answer between A to E. A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, E. Okay, and then uh, whatever you think the answer is, just put in that uh, alphabet, that, that letter. Okay, I, I want to make it a little easier for those people that are on the phone or on mobile because I realized last week when I was doing it, I'm like, all right, some people are slow and they're complaining they're slow and I thought what they meant by the chat, but it wasn't. It was because they're on mobile and the people that are at home in front of the PCs are beating them out with the legit typing that they do. So... Yeah, get ready, guys, for some trivia. And uh, also, we're going to do a running total. Our last, our current king of the TWB trivia is John Bear Fish Room because he got it up by three points last week, almost beating Angelo Fish Tanks. Uh, but we'll see what we do. There's 24 questions this week. Okay, first six is about aquariums. The next six is, uh, is it? The next six, yeah, the next six is about paranormal. The next six after that is about dinosaurs. And the next six after that is movie trivia. Actually, celebrating Infinity Wars is going to be MCU trivia, all right? So hopefully you guys are a fan of the MCU movies, you know, Avengers and all that stuff, because we're going to have some major questions on that. Okay, so here we go, guys. Let's pull up the trivia screen here. Here we go, nice and pretty for you guys. All right, so as I said, John Bear Fish Room is in the lead, all-time lead. Okay, so there is an all-time leaderboard. We'll have, maybe we'll probably separate it for monthly. We'll have monthly winners and stuff. Well, anyways, I'm gonna build something really nice to make it uh, fun. And then uh, later on, we'll go ahead on the um, uh, fish box, uh, the, the water box um, website. You can actually sign up an account tie your account with uh, YouTube and then be able to just keep track of your scores and, and know which questions you answer. So I want to make this really fun for you guys. I want to make live chat more fun with you guys. So hopefully you like this. All right, here we go, guys. First question. I'll see this working. And by the way, I didn't work out any, most of the bugs yet because I didn't have much time, but here we go. First question, guys, you ready for this? First question is a multiple choice question is what is the largest species of fish? There you go. The answers are right there on the screen. Go ahead and type what you think it is. The first person that gets it will, of course, get the credit for the uh, for the question. Okay. Here we go. Anyone in there? The largest species of the fish. Now, I put some you know, little humor in there some in the, on, on some of the answers there. If you guys don't know who Frank is, Frank will always, always be the largest fish out there, I think. Okay, Allie. Nice. Allie has gotten it with uh, the answer whale shark. Nice, Allie. Uh, hold on a second here. So credit to Allie on that one. Good job. Now, yeah, that is the biggest fish, uh, species of fish that, that we have out there. I wish, you know, what I need to do is research this stuff, but I just don't have much time there. But I should research that stuff and we could talk about the answer, you know, afterwards, you know, really quick. But anyways, good try, guys. Uh, I thought a lot of you guys would might have gotten A on that, but I guess not. And also, later on, when, when, this, when, we figure out, when I figure out and we figure out how to make this, you know, a little more challenging... The questions, each question is going to have a different level of points, right? So harder questions might have a little more, more points to it. But I just got to figure out how to do it, right? All right, the next question, guys. Here we go. Anemones most commonly form symbiotic relationships with what? There you go. Answers up on the board. Go ahead and choose your answer based on what you think it is.
All right, and I, I, I realize I have to actually put something in the chat so I know when to separate when the questions are being shot off. Okay, again, anemones are most commonly formed symbiotically relationships with which one of these? John Bear Fish Room has got it with the clownfish. John Bear is just rolling in the dough. I don't know if that's actually John Bear or his mother, Elizabeth. So, you know, maybe, maybe we just have to just, you know, require her if she wants to play to get on her own account so we know which is which. Okay, because I don't know if we could consider that cheating or not. Hmm. Okay, next question coming up, guys. Here we go. Some corals have the ability to move. True or false? If you think it's true, type in T. If you think it's false, type in F. And let's see who gets this right or wrong. I actually thought this is a really cool thing uh, about about this, about the course. Oh, did I just give away a hint? I don't know. That was John I type. <laughs> so, okay, double T. Maybe that is not cheating. It's a little slow, right? Because John has to say the answer and then you have to type it out. So, he's a robot. Yes, he is. He's a hacker robot. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, whoa. Who's the first one? His ability to move. It is true. Ryo. Ooh, congratulations on that score. Caleb, you're going to have to ask me the question later. We're doing trivia. This screen's going to just blow up. So. There you go. And no one's in the lead yet. But we just started, though. We just started. Okay. All right. Loading up the next question. Now, why are some of you guys slow? Are you, because I hope it's not because your feet or whatever. Yeah. I really like wish every, you know, get everyone on the same level and stuff. So let's make it more fun because it would suck if you well, can never answer. You can never get anything right because you're always so slow. You know, our next question, guys, here we go. CO2 in tanks that we use for planet tanks is in what kind of form? Answers are on the board. Select the right letter for whatever you think the answer is. All right. T. Right, Max. Are you really like lagging or something? Am I lagging that hard on you? Phones. Oh, the phones lag that much? Congratulations, Julia. Everyone said A. I knew they were going to say A because everyone thinks that it's a gas. No, CO2 when it's uh, uh, entered into or put into your tank is actually liquid. It's the, it's the reaction of releasing the pressure that changes into a gas. Nice one on that one, Julia. I didn't know that was going to be that hard. Oh, a lot of people follow up with B now after work. Nice. Not much of a lag. Okay, good. All right. You guys ready for the next question? Here we go. What kind of creature is the Portuguese man o war? And we're not talking about the He Man character, man o war. We are talking about the animal or, yeah, creature. What was the exclamation points, Julia, for? Again, answers are on the screen there. Good one. John Bear Fish Room's got it with uh, jellyfish. E, good one there. Oh, no. You know what? John Bear is, like, keeping his lead up, guys. Is he going to just keep winning? You let that happen, guys? Come on. Come on. Let's get it good. Let's get it good. Cover his eyes or something, Elizabeth. By the way, you guys are getting beat by like a little kid. Oh, you shocked that you got it. Why are you shocked that you got it? Did you just guess or you just...
kind of figured it out. Okay, loading next question, guys. Next question. Here we go. Oh, he loves jellyfish. Next question. And loading. In paranormal research, what is the acronym of recording ghostly voices? Now, this is a free-form answer. You have to type it out. It has to be spelled correctly. It's a free-form question. You have to type it out. Spelled correctly. In paranormal research, what is the acronym of recording ghostly voices? The acronym of the process of recording, recording ghostly voices. Okay? I wonder how f how lagged Ry Mac Cichlids is. Because he seems to be answering question like when we move to the next question. Good one, Alpha Aquariums. He's got it with EVP. By the way, we're moving into the paranormal questions now. So I don't know if you guys are into paranormal. I'm hugely into paranormal. Well, I used to be. Um, I actually... No fact. Here's a fun fact about me. Years and years ago, before ghost hunting was cool and on, on, uh, on TV and stuff, I used to do that. I mean, I literally was one of those nerds that ran around doing inspection stuff. I used to work with the International Paranormal Society of... Oh, no. The National Society of Paranormal Research. So uh, that was fun. Those were fun times. Saw some really weird stuff. Definitely. Definitely. The acronym. Jolly. Joey. So. Cool. All right. Here we go. Next question, guys. Loading question. Where would you travel to see the creature Loch, Loch Ness Monster Nessie? Where would you go and see Nessie? It's an Asian thing. Well, Asians are really superstitious too, so. Would if it wasn't spooky. Yeah, it could get spooky. It could be really fine chilling. Some crazy stuff. See, is it? Ryo, you got it. It is Scotland. Good job, my friend. Are you going to take the crown away from John Bear? Is that possible? We got a tie? Coming up with the tie, guys. It lags if you don't hit the space bar to remove uh, the quotes. Huh. Say something? Oh, really? It does. Oh, you're giving out all your secrets now, Julia. Don't do that. I get ahead. Not tell people that. Okay, get ready. Get ready. Here we go. Loading next question. The name Poltergeist means silent ghost or that which walks quietly. Is that true or is that false? T or F? True or false? Questions are up on the board. Type in the letter in which you think is the right answer. True or false, T or F. There we go, John Bear again. It is false, it is not true. Uh, poltergeist means noisy ghost. Good try, D. At least you got it first, though. You just got to type in first. John hates ghosts. Don't count this. Well, this stuff answering. <laughs> you're so lost right now. Why are you lost? Are you not into... Uh, I guess you're not into the paranormal stuff. Okay, we're going to the next question now. All right, loading next question. In what state is Area 51 located? This one should be easy. In what state? Whew. 
<laughs> oh no. Are you a trivia nut? John Bear's leading. But, they, you know, they're a mom and son team. I don't know if that, that's fair. Mean Mug Aquatics. You got it, buddy. Hey, it is Nevada. But I'm not saying that. Baldwin Davidson, New Mexico. Good try, almost. I just want to see if anyone picks E. All right? If anyone picks E, you need to leave my chat right now. Because if you really think South America is a state, you need to leave. You have more problems than worrying about trivia right now. Congrats to Mean Mug Aquatics. Ah, why is this loading? There we go. All right, here we go for the next question, guys. And I keep forgetting. I don't know. I don't have to wait because there's a lag. So, All right, next question. Get ready on your keyboards. And the next question is loading. And it is, the infamous bridge associated with the Mothman was called the Mothrin Bridge in Atlanta. True or false? T or F, true or false. That's all I need. Give it to me, baby. These cheating moms are cheat codes. Yeah, moms are cheat codes. Forever, yeah. Yeah, one of those boards of letters, the Ouija boards. Got it. Yep, Mean Mugs got it again. It is false. It is not actually Mothrin Bridge in the land. There's no such thing. I made that up, Alpha. Oh, don't you feel bad now? I made it up. I tricked you, buddy. It's actually Silver Bridge. I believe it's called. Is it Silver Bridge? Yeah. Silver Bridge in uh, West Virginia. Uh, it, it connects West Virginia to uh, Ohio. So here you go. Good try, though, Alpha. I like that. I threw you off. I threw you off, buddy. All right. Get ready for the next question. Oop. What is the ability to touch an object to gain information and events called? What is that ability called? You touch an object and you get information or, you know, get flashbacks and stuff from it or feelings and emotion. What is that ability called? Answers are up on the board. Select the letter that you think is the answer. And we'll go with that. <laughs> you just pick one. Phone is slow. Mm, I have to check it now. I have to see how slow it is on the phone. It's not good to play trivia on, on, on a slow connection or something like that. John Bear's got it again. It is E. It is psycho, uh, psych psychometry. Uh, psychometry. Psychokinesis is actually the ability to control fire with your mind. I want that ability. I want to just say, heat up my aquarium. Right? That'd be cool. That'd be very cool. Okay. Congratulations to John Bear again. And again, leading the leaderboard. Someone's got to take Elizabeth and John down. And again, you weren't supposed to answer, right? I mean... <laughs> you guessed? Well, guessing still works too. Yeah, we have to figure a way to make this... Um, fair, because the lag. I don't like the lag. Hi, Priscilla. How you doing? Welcome. We're doing our trivia right now. But anyways, next question, guys. Boom. Uh, we're in the dinosaurs now. What dinosaur name means fast thief? What dinosaur name? It's a free-form answer. Oh, shoot. Actually, it's not a free-form answer, but now it is a free-form answer. I might have to move on to the next one. This was actually a multiple choice. I set it up wrong. But let's see what happens. What dinosaur name means fast thief? Should be easy. I mean, if you're into dinosaurs or kind of just connect the dots. 
Yeah, but what's the full name, Ali? That's a hint, guys. Lasso Raptor, Ryo's got it. Velociraptor, yep, that's it. Velociraptor. Wait, how you spell it? Velociraptor. You know what? I think I forgot how to spell it. What the hell do you spell it? Velociraptor. Who's right? Who is right that spelled it right? Velociraptor. Ah, you got it, Ryo. Congrats. Ryo has got the right answer because he spelled it correctly. That was supposed to be a little more easier because it was a multiple choice question. But, yeah, so close. Yeah, like I said, the free form questions, you got to answer the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay, next question. The meteor that was believed to kill the dinosaur struck in what's now known to be Mexico. Is that true or false? T or F? Submit your answers to the chat and let's see who's got the skills. A Comcast has five different internet speeds, all different pre Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> I like to help it. Don't make fun of T-Rex disabilities. <laughs> That's right, Allie, an egg stealer. Allie knows the dinosaurs. Ryo, true. It is uh, Mexico. That one was dependent on who has the fast hands. Maybe we should rename this from trivia to who has the fast hands. And who has the fastest connection, right? Next question, guys, loading up on the screen. Here we go. What is the only dinosaur lineage to survive the mass extinction event? This is a free-form answer, so type in your answer. For those typers. What is the only dinosaur lineage to survive the mass extinction event? By the way, overall top right now is John Bear at 7. Now someone needs to knock him off his high horse, guys. Birds. Alpha, you got it. Birds. Caleb, you got the last one? How'd you get the last one? Did I miss it? Alpha, congratulations. It is birds. Chickens? Mammoths? Uh, chickens. I like the chickens. Every time someone says chickens, have you ever seen Young Guns? The most funniest part of it is when they get all high on peyote. <laughs> They're just running around. Guys in the desert going, Chicken, did you see the side of that chicken? Did you see the side of that chicken? It's funny. Oh, actually, Caleb, you did get that one, not Ryo. Mmm. Alright, I will give Caleb a point for that. But, um... I'll have to put it in later. I don't know if you're going to catch up. Assuming that you will catch up, uh, we'll have to remember you got a point for that. Uh, but I'll give Raul his point too. Just because you still answered because I messed up. So Alpha Coyams did get that. Congratulations, buddy. You are now tied in the session, trivia session, with John Bear. So are you going to knock, off, knock him off his high horse? We'll see. Next question, guys. Loading. Dinosaurs lived during which period of Earth's history? At which period? The answers are up on screen. Type in the letter that you think is the answer. We'll see how smart you are. Yeah, now you did what, Caleb. I just didn't see you do it. It's hard to see it when you have the little one little letters. But I'll give you points for that. Just pretend your name is on that scoreboard there. I have to actually you know, open the database and plug you in. I don't have a way. I didn't write a way for me to just add anyone in. Without um, adjusting, uh, without tying them to the actual question. Up, uh, Ryo, you got it again. It is C. The mosaic period. Now 
Nice. Good one there. Wait a minute. Bro, wow, you got that one right. Did not give you your point. Oh, dang it, it copied that. All right, well, Ryle's up in the beginning there. It copied the, the question mark. That's why I missed it. All right, so just remember when we count up score. I'll fix that later, but. All right, here we go in the MCU trivia. In the MCU movie, Spider-Man first appeared in Homecoming, True or False. Okay, again, we are going through some MCU uh, Marvel movie trivias in celebration of the release of this weekend's Infinity Wars. And I don't know if you guys seen it yet. I heard it was great. I can't wait to see it. I'm seeing it on Tuesday. Uh, waiting for Tuesday because the theater we go to actually serves dinner and stuff. It's a really cool place. So, um, And it's like $5 Tuesday. So you get to see Infinity Wars for $5. So it's really cool. Ryo says true. Ali says false. Ali is correct. Spider-Man did not first appear in Homecoming. He first appeared in Civil War, which happened before Homecoming. Congrats to Ali. A lot of people got that. Nice. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Now, I'm typing th this in because I have a lag, so hopefully you guys see my typing before uh, anything. Yeah, they are fast, Priscilla. If you're on your phone or something, I heard there's more of a lag. So, sorry about that. All right, which of the characters did not appear in Phase 1 of the MCU movie releases? Phase 1. If you know what the phases are, it's usually the phases uh, going up, leading up to the Avengers movies. You know, you got all the movies and then Avengers. Got all the movies and the Avengers. And then all the movies and the Avengers. Okay, that's what they're talking about. Phase 1. You got that? I don't think you got that, Alpha. Did you? Did I miss your... No, Ali got that. According to my screen, Ali got it. Ali got it again. Oh, Ali, this must be up your alley. Yeah, get it? Ali, up your alley. Get it, get it, get it. MCU, is that your... Uh, is that one of your favorite uh, things? MCU? I know it's one of mine. It is the Black Panther, guys. Black Panther did not appear in any of the movies in the first phase. Okay, next question. Okay, loading up, and here we go. What legislation requires superhumans to be governed by the law? Okay. Oh, okay, Alpha. Okay, next question up. What legislation requires superhumans to be governed by law? This is an MCU question. Um, answers are on the screen. Type in the letter that you think is the right answer. And let's see who knows their Marvel movies. And welcome, Jard. Jad. Welcome, Jad Orsi. Orsi. We're doing trivia right now. Last leg of it. John Bear says C. Ryo says C. Alpha says B. Airbrush says D. Ali says B. Me Mug says D. Are you guys getting a pattern here? No one's getting it. Air Bear. Congratulations. You got it. It is the Sokovia Accords. And remember, Sokovia, that's where they blew. That's where the bomb went off. And blew up. Okay. Congratulations to everybody. I'm surprised that that one's a little harder, huh? Total guess. Ali. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Loading next question. In the Avengers Civil War, Bucky and Captain America fought against which superhero? Answers are on the board. Select the letter that you think is the right answer. 
in the Avengers Civil War, Bucky and Captain America fought against which superhero? Again, in the Avengers Civil War, Bucky and Captain America fought against which superhero? I right, see you later, Pat Rick. Congratulations to Caleb. It is E. This never happened, guys. All right? Telling you this right now. This never happened. Why? Caleb, can you tell them why? Caleb, Alpha, John Bear, can you tell them why it never happened? I want to see if anyone understands why they got it when they answer the question. E is the correct question, but why? No, that's not it, Super. That's super. Um, that's not it, John. He's a geek gadget. No, that's not it. I'd like to know why you guys picked E. None of it ever happened. And I think the question is su superhero, not super me. Oh, whatever. But I like to think. What do you think? Drugs? Wrong movie. Almost there, Caleb. All right. Here's here's why. That movie doesn't exist, guys. That was a trick question. All right, there is no the Avengers Civil War. It was Captain America Civil War. Huh? Huh? There you guys go. I tricked you. How do you like that? How do you like that, guys? How do you like that? All right, guys, welcome. That was fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to try to make it a little more fun. Try to figure out how to make it a little more fair because apparently, you know, every time we try it, there's something that goes on. Like, you guys are lagging somehow. So I'll figure a way, something easy uh, to fix the problem. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I will figure it out. But anyways, thank you for that. I hope you guys have fun with that. Uh, let me know if you guys want to do more of it. And by the way, there is actually a tie between John Bear. No, Ryo. Ryo, because remember I made that mistake. You're on there twice. Ryo wins this week's um, trivia at five points. John Bear got it at four. Okay. Ali, you almost got it there. You're at three. Um, and then Alpha, uh, Alpha and Mean Mug got two. And then uh, Air Bear, you're at one. Julia, you're at one. So, Congratulations, Ryo. You will you are currently the king of TWDB trivia. Congratulations there, buddy. Um Yeah. <laughs> hey, I gotta throw in those trick questions, guys. You guys have to pay attention. I think Caleb's the only one who got me. I think he understood what, what I was doing there. But yeah, next uh next week we're gonna have the same thing. We're gonna have some fun with this. So yeah, twenty four questions. I hope that's not too long. That actually lasted forty minutes. So I don't know if it's too much or do you like it this much? It'll stretch the live stream to about an hour and a half if we did like that. Do you like the amount of questions is it enough or do you want less? Let me know. Um, so yeah, it's free chat time. If you guys got any questions, Caleb, you had that question. I don't know what it was. It's going to be hard to scroll back up because it's way back up there. So I ask that question again if you can. Uh, you're happy to get on the board. Yeah. Can you add? I'll fix the scoring as well because... Uh, uh, Caleb, well, who was it? Well, right, who's the person that got? I have to go back and look at my chat. I fixed Ryo's uh, score, and then someone got it. I think it was Caleb got a question that I I, I uh, missed. So, yeah, good game, guys. I think I will make something special just for trivia, right? A little a special prize, you know, a little fuzzy fish or something. You know, that'd be like the little trophy, a little fuzzy fish. I think I sourced that in China somewhere, right? Just don't eat it. If I ever get it and it's can become prize and I send it, you guys don't eat it. No. So yeah. So uh, free chat, guys. If you guys got any questions or you want to ask me anything, I'm here. It doesn't have to be about aquariums. It could be anything. And um, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this super chat. We got. I'll, I'll go with five minutes. I think we're gonna do. If this chat seems like it's moving and it's not boring. And maybe I'll just keep it at an hour and half instead of an hour. Uh, it seems like you guys are having fun when I'm putting all these new things and trying new things. So uh, feedback's important because I'm putting these new things. Out. I want to know if it works for you guys, if you like it or not. Uh, so yeah. 
Yeah, trivia. Yeah, I'm gonna try to also, you know, separate these questions, make them in categories, so uh, it'll be, you know, kind of a theme to each category and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, got uh, got to love interaction. Past just questions and answers. Yeah, I don't want just. I mean, question and answers are big. I want to do that, of course. That's one of the big part of the show. But I also want to do other things, keep you guys interested and stuff. So. Oh, you gotta eat it, Ali. <laughs> okay. I just don't eat too many of it. You might get fat. But anyways, here we go. Um, yeah. Any other questions, guys, before I take out? I think this is uh, almost to the end there. So I'll give it a few more, you know, 30 more seconds. See if you guys got any questions. Oh, my banana plant has three leaves on the surface now. We'll take over the whole top of the thing. Uh we could. I mean, just let it go. If it works in the verse, uh, trim it. You know, just cut off the leaves. Uh, cut off the stems and the leaves. Uh, and you'll be okay. But yeah, I could take up the top of the tank. It depends on how what the environment is. So, Alpha Aquariums. How many hamsters stacked on top of each other would it take to get to the moon? A hell of a lot. I don't know that exact number. It also depends on the hamsters. Is it a small hamster or is it a big hamster? Are they flat or are they big and fat? Right? You have to take all those into account. Right? So you can't just say hamster. You have to understand. You have to give me more and more and more variables to it. Right? Big hamster, small hamster, flat hamster, uh, thick hamster. You know, hamsters that can't stay still. Hamsters that like to dance. They can't sit still. They can't sit still. And they're not going to be able to stack. All that other stuff. So, good question though. Very important. We need that in our lives. Important questions like, how many hamsters are stacked to get to the moon? Okay. Yeah, I'll see you later, Ali. Thank you for joining us. Uh, glad you had fun, D. Specifics happening for a friend. Laden or unladen? Unladen. It's always an unladen swallow. I just got an onion plant in my amount of scars lace. Any tips on growing them? On both of those plants, stick them in the soil and let them grow. They're really easy plants to grow. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems with either of those. So... Yeah, uh, low light will work, I think, on both of them, too. So, yeah. <laughs> You're glad you stuck around for the after talk. Well, there you go, guys. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and listen. I guess I'll end this with the final thought. Yeah, I'm trying to be Jerry Spring here, and I don't know what the final thought is, and I just thought about giving a final thought. Um, I really don't have any words of wisdom right now other than, hey, it's life. We don't live a long life. We don't got that many years to live it. So make sure you have fun. Make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them because trust me, man, you don't want to live with that regret when, you know, something happens or anything like that does happen. Um, tell them you love them. You know, love each other. That's all we got. Okay? So uh, that's it. Closing this live chat. I love you guys. See you next video and definitely see you next week on uh, Let's Chat Aqua. Bye, guys. Once I could find the damn closing screen. There's got to be a better way to do this. I always do this every time.